Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. Today we'll have our seventh lesson on the topic of homonyms. What are homonyms? Homonyms we've learned are two words, sometimes three words, that have different meanings, different spellings, and yet they're pronounced in the same way. Two words that have different meanings. They are spelled differently and yet for some inexplicable reason they are pronounced in the same manner and those are called homonyms. Today we will have our seventh lesson. Seventh lesson in a series of ten. Let's get going, shall we? Number 66 is the very first one we have. Number 66 is all together, all Together. What does it mean when you put it as two words? Now, strictly speaking, does not does this does not qualify as a candidate for a homonym because it has to be a word. These are this is not a word; it's a pair of words here, all together. But that's okay. All together. That simply means all of us, all of us, together, all of us together. We are, we are, coming, we are coming all together. What does it mean? We are coming all together. Simply, that simply means we are all coming together. We are all coming together. All of us together. We are all we are all coming together. We are coming all together. As opposed to this all together. As opposed to this all together which is which is just one word all together and it's an adverb it's an adverb even though it doesn't look like a typical adverb typical, ad, typical adverb ends in a ly but this is an adverb it simply means it simply means It simply means completely. As you can see, it's a, it's a typical adverb as we, as we said, and an ly. This one does not, but it is an ad, adverb altogether, which means completely or entirely. Entirely. You see? It's an adverb entirely. For example, you might say, I agree. I agree with you. I agree with you. All together, I agree with you. All together, I agree with you completely. I agree with you thoroughly. I agree with you entirely. I agree with you wholeheartedly. All together, I agree with you all together. I spoke with him. Did you speak with Michael about the problem? Uh, yes, I did speak with him. Oh, what did he say? Well, what he, what, 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 he, what he said was altogether nonsensical. What he said was altogether nonsensical. What he said was completely. No, was was a complete nonsense. Was 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 complete nonsense. What he said was altogether false. What he said was completely false. What he said altogether. What he said was altogether false. Altogether inaccurate. Completely inaccurate. Thoroughly inaccurate. So don't confuse this altogether when you spell as one word, and then when you spell with two words, all and together, which simply means. All of us together are coming. Do you understand? Let's move on to the next word, next pair. Next pair of homonyms we have is sixty-seven. Alter. Very simple word, it's a verb. You know what it means to alter? It's a very simple word as I said, which means to change. To change or to modify. And of course the noun would be the noun would, or noun of alter would be alteration. Or the noun of modify would be Modification. This was not a problem. This is, as I said, is a simple word. We know it. Alter means to change or modify. 
there's another altar there's another altar which has a different meaning but of course it has the same pronunciation obviously it has the same pronunciation because that's why they call homonyms A L T A R which is also a noun so one more time this altar that we're going to talk about is spelled with an A this altar here was spelled with an E what does it mean when you spell altar with an A altar spelled with an A is something that you will find in a church in a church it's a, it's a, it's a raised or elevated structure used for religious ceremonies. Of course religious ceremonies, what else? What else would you expect? It's a church. For those of you who are of Christian faith, of course this is a very simple word, but for, for those of us who are not, uh, an altar is something, is a part of the church. If you walk in the church the, towards the very front, uh, it's a raised structure compared to the other rest of the stuff. It's a little bit higher and that's called altar. That's where most, most ceremonies take place such as baptism, such as marriage ceremony, one, one walks up to an altar. Understand? The church is collecting contributions because they would like to alter the altar. They would like to modify the altar. They would like to uh, renovate. They want, they want to redo it. They want to change the structure of it. They want to change the design of it. They would like to alter the altar. They would like to make some alterations in the altar. Let's move on to the next one, shall we? Number 68. Number 68 is another, another tricky pair. Capital, which is a noun. And again, it's a very straightforward, simple word. You know what that means, capital. Of course, when I, of course, when I put the pronunciation underneath just one word and not underneath the other one, there is a reason for it. The reason is very straightforward, because the pronunciation is the same. This capital and another capital that we're going to learn, they have the same pronunciation. Of course, they have the same pronunciation. That's what it says here. They have different spellings. You see, they have different spellings. One was spelled with an e, altered with an e, one with an a. They have different meanings, but they have the same pronunciation. So since they have the same pronunciation, sometimes I don't write a pronunciation both times, it will be silly. What is this capital? This capital is very straightforward, of course you know what that is. It's a seat of government. It's a seat of government. It's a city. It's a, it's a city. But it does not need to be, but it does not need to be the largest city in a given country. A lot of the countries where, a lot of the countries have an arrangement such that the largest city in that, in that given country also happens to be their capital, their seat of government, such as Paris, France, or London, England, or uh, I can't think of any other countries where the largest city is also the capital, uh, but there are many of them. London is the largest city in the UK, which is also the capital of the UK. France, Paris is the largest uh, city, and that's also the capital. And like I said, there are many other countries, but then there are several other countries where the capital city does not need to be the largest city. I don't know why I'm digressing here because this is not a lesson about geography, but, but there you have it. For example, Washington DC, Washington DC is the capital of the US, but Washington DC is not the largest city in the US. Brasilia comes, is another one that comes to my mind, uh, which is the capital of Brazil, which was a city that was created from scratch in the 60s. It was built from scratch, it didn't exist before. Islamabad in Pakistan, the capital of Pakistan is another example a city that is not the largest city, it didn't exist before the 60s, it was built from the scratch, uh, and it, 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 it's, it's the capital. New Delhi is the capital of India. New Delhi is not the largest city in India, and so on and so forth. Anyway, that's the capital. What's the other capital? Well, the other capital is this one. C-A-P-I-T-O-L which is also a noun. 
It's a very common mistake people make, people who do not know the difference, people who do not know any better, they end up using this capital with an A, where they should be using that capital. It has the same pronunciation obviously, but just for emphasis, I'm going to write underneath it just so you understand it. It's exactly the same capital. But what does this capital mean? This capital is the building. It's the building. Or a structure, if you like. Where, where, where lawmakers, where lawmakers assemble. Where lawmakers assemble. The lawmakers, there's a better word for it, so calling them lawmakers, they are called, they are called legislatures, where the lawmakers, where the legislators get together to pass laws, that building where they meet is called the capital. It's pronounced in the same way, which is why if you go to Washington DC, in the DC there is a, there's a, there's a very famous building which is called the US Capitol, spelled with an O. That's where the Congress meets, it's the US Capitol, that's where the Congress meets as I said, and that's where they uh, meet together and, and pass laws, enact new laws. Let's go on then. So don't confuse the two. Do you understand? Don't confuse the two. Uh, the, the, the city that I live in, uh, the, the, the state that I live in, is called Connecticut. And in Connecticut, the capital city is Hartford. The capital of state of Connecticut is Hartford, which is not, which by the way is not the largest city in, 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 in Connecticut. But in Hartford, if you go to Hartford, there's a very famous street called, called Capitol Avenue. Capitol Avenue. And most of the times I have seen people misspell it. When you, when you see it in writing in the address, instead of writing O, they put down A here because they don't know any better. It is actually Capitol Avenue. And if somebody does write capital with an O, Capitol Avenue, it's not a misspelling. That is the correct spelling. The reason why that street is called Capitol Avenue is because that's the street where the state capital is located. A grand old building with the, with the be a beautiful grand old building with a huge uh, golden uh, gold uh, dome on the top. You can see it from the highway, which is the state capital. And the state capital building is located on Capitol Avenue, which is why the street is called Capitol Avenue. It, capitol Avenue is so called because that's where the state capital is. Do you understand? That will be spelled with an O. Let's move on. Oh, let's learn this word properly. Legislate. It's a it's a word. Leg the legislate, which means to simply to pass to pass laws. And the verb is legislate. And here here in this word is the pronunciation is very important even though it is it has T is T U R E S is pronounced legislatures. It has a ch sound in it. Sure. Capital building is where the legislatures assemble, where the legislatures assemble to legislate. To legislate and, and by doing so they pass legislations. They pass legislations which are the laws of the land. Do you understand? Let's move on then. Number 69. Number 69. Let me pick up some speed here. I'm going at too much of a leisurely pace. Number 69, we have complement. 
Compliment spelled with an E. Compliment spelled with an E. This compliment simply means that something that brings something else to completion, uh, makes it complete. It's a noun, or it could be a verb also. As a noun, it means something that completes something else. As a verb, it means something that goes well together with something that goes well together with something else. Something that goes well together with something else, something that brings it to, con to perfection. For example, if someone tells you that the tie that you have on complements the shirt. The tie and the shirt complement each other. That means they go well together, each other, uh, well together uh, with each other. They complete each other. They bring each other to perfection. The tie complements the shirt. Do you understand? Let's learn the other complement, which is C O C O M P L I E N T, which is a noun, and of course it's pronounced in the same way. They are both pronounced as they are both pronounced as. Compliment. Compliment. And this compliment, when it's when it is spelled with an I, when it is spelled with an I, it means it's a praise. It's a praise. It's a it's a it's a it's a it's, a, it's, an, it's an admiration, an expression of admiration. An expression. It's an exp, it's an expression of praise for admiration compliment now the mnemonic that I use we have we have we have learned the word mnemonic before what does mnemonic mean mnemonic has a silent M in the beginning mnemonic is a memory device mnemonic is a memory device something that you make up to help you remember something else the mnemonic, the trick that I use, the memory device that I use, is this one. I, I, like, I, like, compliments. What do I like? Well, I like compliments. Of course, who doesn't? I like compliments. Of course, who doesn't? Everybody likes compliments. Everybody likes to be complimented. And that reminds me that this compliment with an I, this compliment with the I, is the one that I like, which is the expression of praise. That's a different compliment. I like compliments. Just remember that. And that will keep the two separate. Let's move on to the last pair we have for today, number 70. Number 70. The pair that we have is as follows. This council is pronounced council. Council. This pronoun this council is spelled with C I. Council. What is this council that is spelled with a C I? That council is a body of uh, a group of people, a body, a body of people, a uh, body of people, or if you like, a group of people that assembles, that assembles to discuss a problem. problem or an issue 
or an ordinary matter. It's a body of, body of people that you put together. It's a body of people that you put together, a group of people that are put together, uh, either on a permanent basis or on a temporary basis just for this particular issue, or you may have a council that is a permanent structure. It's a group of people. They always meet together and discuss all the problems that are that are that, that, that the university is facing, or your housing state. If you live in a in a in a condominium uh, complex, then you may have a council where this this particular group who are elected on a, on a yearly basis or whatever whatever the arrangement might be, and they get together and discuss all the problems that the that, that the association is facing. It's called a council. They they meet together to discuss things, discuss problems, discuss issues that are being faced by the community. That's one council. Let's move on to the next council. And this council is going to be spelled with C-O-U-N, C-O-U-N, as you can see, C-O-U-N. S-E. S E L, which is also a noun, which is also a noun, pronounced in the same exact way, of course. Council, pronounced in the same exact way, it's no difference at all. Council, and this council is a noun, is an advice, it's an advice, it's guidance. It's an opinion. Which is why which is why the person who dispenses the advice, the person who gives the advice, is typically referred to as a counselor. But that counselor is spelled with an S E. Counselor and counsel. They pronounce the same way. That was the end of our that was the end of our discussion for today. I will see you tomorrow, okay? I know.